Greetings, and welcome to video lecture number three on the Merchant of Venice, Act One, Scene Three. And in this uh, this uh, video lecture, we're going to be focusing solely on on Act Three, uh, the uh, the final. I'm uh, uh, sorry, solely on Scene Three, the final scene of Act One. Uh, again, we begin uh, a somewhat unmedious race at the beginning of Act. One scene three. We began uh, Act One, Scene One, the same way, and in the, in in a lot of ways, we began Act One, Scene Two, the same way. Act three, Act One, Scene Three begins on Medius Race as Bassanio and Shylock, whom we meet for the first time in this scene, uh, and they are in the midst of a conversation. We are now back in Venice, so we have moved from uh, the court back into the forest if you will. So we are in, back in Venice and Bassanio has reached out to Shylock to uh, borrow money. Uh, and last we saw uh, Bassanio, he was with Antonio and Antonio told him, go into Venice and, uh, and see what my credit will do. See if you can get a loan for the funds that you need. And so here we are. The, this is exactly what he has done. He has sought out Shylock. Shylock is a money lender, uh, also called a usurer. Uh, Shylock uh, is, is a Jew. Uh, and the the only business that uh, that he really could legally tra transact would be the lending of money. This is set in Venice, and uh, the, the rules of Venice um, are are pretty harsh for the Jews. Um, perhaps not as harsh as they are over in London, where the Jews aren't even allowed inside the the walls of the city of London. In Venice, um, the Jews are allowed inside of Venice, but only during the daytime. There was a special part of the city that was generally walled off that the that the Jews would all live together in uh, with big gates, and those gates would be closed at night. Uh, the, all the Jews would need to go back into the ghetto, is what it was called, uh, at night. Uh, they were not allowed to be outside the, the gates of uh, their part of the city uh, during the night. So very, very restrictive. They were not allowed to, to own uh, uh, any type of business. Uh, they were generally... Um, abused uh, physically and verbally by the Christians uh, while they did walk out uh, in Venice on the Rialto, which is the, the main square. Uh, but what we meet uh, in Venice here during the daytime, uh, Bassanio and Shylock, who uh, obviously have started to discuss uh, this need for funds to be raised. Um, in the same way that we saw this with Act, uh, with Scene 1 and Scene 2, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between prose and blank verse. And as Act 1, Scene 3 begins, we find that Shylock and Bassanio are not speaking in blank verse. They are speaking in prose, which is exactly the way that Portia and Nerissa were speaking. Last time we saw Bassanio, he was speaking in blank verse. And that's likely because he was with Antonio. Keep in mind, Bassanio is, is not a member of the nobility. He's not even rich. He's actually pretty low in social stature, stature. And so it makes sense that he would speak in prose. Certainly in the presence of somebody such as Antonio, his, his language would be raised. But that's not the case here. He's speaking with Shylock, who, of course, is socially even well below Bassanio. Even though Shylock uh, is tremendously wealthy, uh, he's one of the wealthiest of the Jews in the same way that Antonio is one of the wealthiest of the merchants, in the same way that Portia is the wealthiest of everyone. We have three very powerfully, fi financially powerful characters uh, in, these, in these three. But socially, Shylock is at the bottom of the barrel. And so Bassanio and Shylock, it only makes sense that when they speak together, they're speaking in prose. In the text, and it depends on the text that you have, but um, Shylock is referred to sometimes by his name, Shylock, and sometimes simply as Jew. And it will vary from text to text. Uh, some texts stick with just Jew throughout the entire text. Some go back and forth. Um, between Jew and, and Shylock. What they're discussing is the amount of money that's needed, that Bassanio uh, needs to have. And Bassanio is looking to uh, secure 3,000 ducats uh, and for the term of, uh, of the loan, which would be three months. So 3,000 ducats in three months. And I just want to give you a sense using today's 
May 5th, 2020, the day this video is being recorded uh, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, what that value is today, 3,000 tokens, just to kind of put in your brain what's going on here. Today's market, one Renaissance ticket would be worth $188.84, one. And Bassanio is looking for 3,000, which means in today's money, Bassanio is looking for $566,526.45. Chew on that for a minute. He's not looking for a couple of hundred bucks here. He's looking for more than a half a million dollars to borrow. That's a big amount. Why so much? Why so much? Back in Act 1, Scene 1, one of the things that Bassanio says to Antonio uh, as he's making the pitch to him is this. If I had but the means to hold a rival place with one of them. And what Bassanio is talking about is he knows that there are rival suitors that are showing up at the door of Portia's house every day to try to win her hand. And these people are coming in, blowing in from the four corners of the world, the richest people on the planet, the richest bachelors on the planet, who would like nothing better than to get their hands on Portia's money. And he just can't simply go knock on the door and say, hey, I'm Bassanio, I ain't got nothing. How'd you like to marry me? He has to show up um, using his phrase, showing something of a more swelling port. He needs to look as though he belongs in that space to be even invited into the space. Otherwise, he'd be turned away and laughed at. In other words, in order for him to make money, he's going to have to have some money. Again, back to the idea that uh, this is probably not the first time Bassanio has asked Antonio for money with a plan, right? Only this time, it's not a couple hundred bucks. It's a significant amount of money. Consider that, right? Antonio knows full well how much money Bassanio is going to need. And yet, Antonio says, go into Venice and see what my credit will do to secure you the loan. I'll offer you my extremist means. Well, to me, a half a million dollars plus seems like an extreme means. That's why he needs so much money. He needs to hold a rival place with princes, right? Uh, rulers of lands who are showing up to rule Portia. This is his competition. Now, Bassanio is not aware of the, uh, the, the conditions of the father's will. He doesn't even know that exists and we haven't really been introduced to the conditions yet, but we know there are some. But he's not aware of this, as no, neither is anybody else, frankly, who shows up at the door. But we know they have to be pretty harsh conditions because everybody who was uh, named uh, as suitors in Act 1, Scene 2 have decided, no thanks, I'm not playing this game and are, have left. So as scene three begins, uh, this is the discussion that is ensuing, and we it's just Bassanio and, uh, and Shylock. Antonio enters the scene, uh, and immediately, and this is the tell, right? Immediately, Bassanio and Shylock's language switches from prose to blank verse, right? I have a question there, why? Well, I think we know why, because Antonio has entered, and, and it is generally the role of the noble, of the upper class, uh, to raise the language of the lower class. And we see this time and again in Shakespeare's play. And as Antonio is entering the stage and Bassanio's attention is drawn towards the entrance of, of Antonio onto stage, we hear an aside from Shylock. He speaks directly to the audience and what we get in every aside, right, are the thoughts, the true thoughts, the true motivations of characters are found in the asides. And we hear an aside from Shylock. And this is his aside. He says this. And he says this in, in, uh, in blank verse. But remember, Antonio is on the stage. They can't hear him. But this is what he says. How like a fawning publican he looks. I hate him, for he's a Christian. 
But more for that, in low simplicity, he lends out money gratis and brings down the rate of usance here with us in Venice. If I can catch him once upon the hip, I will feed fat the ancient grudge I bear him. He hates our sacred nation, and he rails. Even there were merchants most to congregate on me, my bargains, and my well-won thrift, which he calls interest. Cursed be my tribe if I forgive him. First, um, I've, I've highlighted here for you publican, and just to give you a sense for what that means, and there are a couple of thoughts. Um, one of them is that it, a publican could re be referring to tax collectors, um, and we find that in the New Testament in Luke chapter 8. And a tax collector is uh, generally uh, uh, seen as somebody who tries to ingratiate himself and asks for mercy from the people from whom he will be uh, essentially extorting tax money from. And so, uh, so that's one thing that he's likely referring to here. Um, and, and what's really fascinating about that is this, that's New Testament. And, and Shylock is, is a Jew and, and right, Shylock is all Old Testament, right? Uh, and yet Shylock is quoting or referring to the New Testament fascinating that he's doing this. Connect that with a little later on in the scene, Antonio will speak the words right at the end of the scene that the devil can cite scripture for his purpose. So an interesting connection, uh, I think, to the end of the scene with Antonio's lines and what Shylock says here. It's this, um, the, uh, the second time we hear a reference of a devil. The first time we hear devil being used in this is when Portia is referring to Morocco, uh, the devil, uh, and certainly the devil in his complexion. And now we, because he, of course, is a black man. And now we see the same kind of idea being used with devil, but here in the form of the Jew. So what does he do? What, is, uh, what, what's, uh, what does it say here that, uh, that the Shylock is so, uh, that he so dislikes Antonio for? Well, uh, Antonio lends money, apparently, gratis, free, no interest, right? And by Antonio lending out money gratis, no interest, it hurts his business because Shylock lends with increase. Shylock lends with interest, but Antonio does not. And so Antonio is a threat to his own uh, business. And he says this, if I can catch him once upon the hip, translate that to mean if I can trip that guy up once, right? If I can just catch him, I will feed fat the ancient grudge I bear him. Ancient grudge. Well, certainly the Jews have, uh, are, you know, at this point have been oppressed for centuries, right? For, for generations, the Jews have been oppressed. And it seems as though Shylock is bearing the weight of all the oppression for all of his people on his shoulders. Right? If he can catch this one guy, this one Christian, if I can catch him, I will satisfy a debt to my people. Which, of course, is silly to think that, uh, first of all, that Shylock should bear the weight of an entire nation of oppressed people on his own shoulders, or, or the thought that uh, simply with catching, or tripping up one Christian, that it would undo all of the oppression or, or in some manner, shape, or form, um, uh, resolve or make him feel better about the oppression of the Jews. And yet, this is what, this is what Shylock says, right? Cursed be my tribe if I forgive him. Right, so we hear exactly how Shylock feels about Antonio. Uh, interestingly enough, um, the, what, the way he will behave, though, um, is one when in earshot of Antonio, at the beginning of this play anyways, he's, he's actually kind of funny and a little pretends to be forgetful and, oh, yeah, yeah, but he kind of behaves like that. But once he turns aside, we see what, what he's really doing. So he's really acting it up uh, here when he is with Antonio, right? Shylock very much wants to bring Antonio down. 
From this point, uh, what they what happens is they go on to discuss the amount and the terms of the loan. And it takes a little while to get there. We're going to hear Shylock um, spew on some uh, some Old Testament stories that uh, will serve to uh, get Antonio a little bit worked up. Um, but ultimately, this is what they're trying to do. They're going to have a discussion um, about um, the, the terms of the loan. And, and, and in the middle of the discussion, Shylock calls out Antonio for his behavior towards him. And when Shylock calls out Antonio, it gets pretty ugly, right? It does get pretty ugly. He gets right to the right, right to the heart of the matter. And I want you to consider as we read through his lines, and remember that the audience that's watching this in London in 1599 is entirely Christian, entirely. And this is a, so. This is a Christian audience that is going to listen to the words that Shylock the Jew speaks. And I want you to think as you listen to these words, how that particular audience member might feel listening to the words that Shakespeare gives Shylock. Shylock says this, Signor Antonio, many a time and off in the Rialto, you have rated me about my monies and my usances. Still have I borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine, and all for use of that which is mine own. Well then, it now appears you need my help. Go to then. You come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies. You say so. You that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spurn a stranger cur over your threshold. Monies is your suit. What should I say to you? Should I not say, hath a dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or shall I bend low and in a bondman's key with bated breath and whispering humbleness say this, Fair sir, you spat on me on Wednesday last. You spurned me on such a day. Another time you called me dog. And for these courtesies, I'll lend you thus much monies? Shylock's lines are very powerful here. Uh, a couple of things. A cur is a dog. A uh, gabardine is the clothes that, um, that uh, Shylock would be wearing. Void your room means to, be, means to spit. Shylock is uh, calling to mind to Antonio all the times that Antonio apparently has done all these things to Shylock on the Rialto, spit upon him, called him a dog, abused him physically, abused him verbally. And now the same man who has done this to Shylock has come to him asking for money. Again, I can bring back to the question, you know, what must a um, what must the audience feel at this time? I mean, it's very powerful for us to hear it. Right. I mean, how, how should we feel? Right. We're, we're talking. We're, Shalak's being very, very upfront about the, this is the experience that he's had his entire life, his entire adult life. Right. The, 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 the verbal abuse, the physical abuse at the hands of Antonio and the Christians. How's the audience supposed to feel when they hear these lines? I suggest this first. Perhaps they feel uncomfortable. Right? Perhaps they feel uncomfortable. Or maybe they don't. Right? Maybe they don't. Maybe they listen to this and think, yeah, he's a Jew. This is what happens. Right? In either case, it causes the audience to think. This is a problem play, after all, right? A problem play, a play that doesn't necessarily fit neatly into the genre. Uh, and this is a comedy. And yet, it doesn't feel like a comedy, does it? Certainly not yet at all. 
where's the where's the funniness, right? Where's the laughs? I think about Shakespeare's play, A Comedy of Errors, which is slapstick, right? I think about um, Midsummer Night's Dream. There's funny stuff that goes on. Where's the fun? And yet this is a comedy, a primary uh, problem play. Let's take a look at Antonio's response to these very powerful words that Shylock has given. Antonio's response is this. I am as like to call thee so again, to spit on thee again, to spurn thee too. If thou wilt lend this money, lend it not as to thy friends. For when did friendship take a breed for barren metal of his friend? But lend it rather to thine enemy, who, if he break, thou mayest with better face exact the penalty. Wow. I'll spit on you again. I'll call you a dog again. I'll kick you again. It's going to happen. Me coming to you to borrow money has nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. Right? These are two separate things, Shylock. Wow. Wow, Antonio is able to compartmentalize these different things. And clearly, based on what Shylock's saying, he's not. Right? He's not. My borrowing your money doesn't make me your friend, he says. This is a business deal. Right? There are no friends in business. There might be a handshake, but that doesn't mean we're friends. That's part of the deal. Interesting, right? Interesting. Uh, Antonio is the merchant of Venice. He is the title character of this play. And yet, you know, we take a look at him and do we like him? We don't have to like our title characters. We don't have to like any characters. In fact, let's take a look at these people. You know, what are Antonio's redeeming qualities? Well, so far, not many. How about Pisanio? Well, he's a fraud. How about Portia? Yeah, she's rich. But look at how she eviscerated the men who were in her, uh, in her house. And look what she said about Morocco. Well, let's take a look at Shylock. And what do we think about him? This is a man who, who seems to be wants simply to exact revenge on, on Antonio. These are our main characters. These are the characters in the play, right? Shylock goes ahead after this and makes the kind, he calls it, offer of a deal where he will not charge interest for borrowing money out of friendship. Fascinating. He will not charge interest. Now, the 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 idea of charging interest, of course, is um, is forbidden in uh, the the Bible. Uh, if uh, the, the, you shall not lend with um, increase, and and um, and the Christians uh, in and uh, do not lend with increase because they know it's a sin, right? Uh, and Shylock brings that up. Uh, the Christians will not because it's a sin. And yet, interestingly enough, the ones who are borrowing all the money are the Christians. Um, considers it considers it a sin. But what Shylock's going to do, because it's not a sin as far as Shylock's concerned, um, what Shylock's going to do is he's going to lend this money without interest. Why would he possibly do that? He's a smart businessman. Why would he lend without interest? Doesn't seem too smart, does it? Well, Antonio is supposed to be a smart businessman, but all of his ships are at sea. How did these two guys get to be at the top of their business? Shylock says here, uh, as Antonio gets all worked up, why, look, you, how you storm. I would be friends. I'd be friends with you and have your love. Forget the shames you have stained me with. Supply your present wants and take no doit of usance for my monies, then you'll not hear me. This is kind I offer. Now, we already know from the aside at the beginning of this scene that what Shylock's intent is to catch him once upon the hip. So the words that he speaks here, we can't take as truth. And the audience knows this, right? A little dramatic irony, perhaps. Um, the audience knows this, but Antonio does not, right? That I, I will not take a doit of use. I will not take one a bit of, of interest out of friendship. You know, you got to be, it sounds like an offer that's too good to be true. And, 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 and right, 
anytime an offer seems too good to be true, it generally is. Here's a catch, right? Here's the catch, right? Here's the catch to the, to the, to the deal. Shylock says this. This kindness will I show. Go with me to a notary. Seal me there your single bond. And uh, in a merry sport, if you repay me not on such a day in such a place, such sums or sums as are expressed in the condition, let the forfeit be nominated for an equal pound of your fair flesh to be cut off and taken. And what part of your body pleaseth me? That's Shylock's offer. That's the deal I'll make. I won't charge you a bit of interest. Pay me back in time over a half a million dollars for three months. And I'll not take a penny of interest. But if you don't pay me back, this deal says that I can cut off a pound of your flesh anywhere I want. And he does this jokingly. Where he, he, he laughs a little bit about it, right? But remember what he said in his aside, right? Remember what he said. Antonio takes the deal. Yeah, Antonio takes the deal. What the heck? Why? In fact, he, he responds almost quick, almost right away, you know, content, he says. Shall I, I'll make this deal with you. Right. And, and instantly, Bassanio says, no, no, you won't. No, 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 no. Not this. No, not for me. You won't. Don't make this deal. Don't you make this deal. No, I'm out. But Antonio makes the deal. Why? Well, he's confident that soon he's going to have plenty of cash. Heck, a month before the, the note is due, uh, he'll have thrice three times, he says, the value of the bond. I'm not going to break the, the bond. This is this is easy. Antonius says, come on. In this, there can be no dismay. My ships come home a month before the day. The last two lines of the scene. Uh, interesting here. I'll just make note. Um, uh, act one and many of the uh, scenes and acts end with rhyming couplets. Shakespeare uses his rhyming couplets, certainly at this point in his uh, in his writing career, sparingly, and he uses them for purpose. So when you see rhymes that are couplets, know this: something important is happening when Shakespeare gives you rhymes. You know, it used to be he used it frequently as the language of love. Romeo and Juliet spoke nothing but couplets back and forth to each other, primarily. But he's he's moved on from that to some degree, and, and now he's using uh, couplets essentially to to mark out really important port parts of the play, right? This is Antonio's thought. But these things need to be considered as we come to the end of Act One. Why? Why does Antonio sign such a deal? It doesn't seem to make sense, does it? I mean, he's a smart business guy, right? He's the merchant of Venice. How did he get to this place of being such a great merchant? Taking deals, making deals like this that, that are head scratchers. A, a good businessman wouldn't make a deal like this, right? I mean, what's what does he possibly have to gain, right? This is for Bassanio, so Bassanio can run off and get married? There's all risk here. What's the reward for Antonio? There doesn't seem to be one. I mean, to what extent would you lend money to a friend so that he or she could get married? Would you sign a deal that potentially puts your life in jeopardy? Right, so these are things to consider here as we get to the end of Act One. You know, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, we'll we'll examine this as as the play goes forward. Um, but suffice it to say that it is happening. At the end of this scene, Shylock and Antonio go off and sign a, a note, sign a a legal piece of tender in Venice that makes the deal. Shylock will lend 3,000 ducats for three months. 
And as long as Antonio pays him back during that three-month period of time, there will be no charge of interest. If Antonio breaks the bond, if he does not pay the money back on the specific date three months from that from the start, Shylock gets to take a pound of Antonio's flesh. And that brings us to the end of Act One. Hopefully we'll see you for Act Two.